you love them, we'll cover them. You have already voted from coast to coast 11 days before what we're calling Election Day. Analysts say up to a third of Americans who end up voting will cast their votes for president in earlier absentee balloting. Right now, the numbers show an advantage for Barack Obama. Democrats are running to the polls in bigger numbers, we're led to believe, and African Americans, who polls show favor Senator Obama by enormous margins, of course, are also getting in line to cast their ballots early. In North Carolina, a swing state, African Americans, we're told, make up about 21% of the population, but that they, this year they account for 31% of all early voters. In Georgia, much the same. African Americans make up 30% of the population and 36% of early voting. And then there's Florida, probably the biggest swing state of all of them. 41% of all voters there are registered Democrats, but early voters, that number jumps to 55%. It means some of the results of this election day are already cast in stone. It's just one of many historic aspects of this race. And for some perspective and context, I'm joined by Kate Kelly, a historian and author of the book Election Day, an American holiday in American history. Good to see you. Thanks yes, for coming. Hi, thank you. It's delightful to be here. When did this early voting thing begin? I mean, wasn't there a time when everybody went to vote on the same day? Well, very early on, it was multiple days because of travel, travel difficulties and coming into the community, so they would have it over a couple of day period. Then we went to one day for a long time, and now the idea started in about the 1970s, but it kind of caught on in 2000, and 14 percent voted early that year, and then the number increased to 20 percent last year. So I think it's a, it's a very quickly growing trend and it does solve the problem of letting people vote at their convenience and you know not have to worry about taking off time from work and that sort of thing. Senators historically have a hard time getting elected president a lot of people believe because they're already on the record okay. on so many different issues because of the fact that they voted and spoken in the halls of Congress. What what's you what U.S. senators went on to become president? We know we're getting one this time. Well we have a pretty long list it's actually 15 and huh. of, the, of the most recent group it's Nixon and Kennedy who were actually voted into office now we had Andrew Johnson Harry Truman and um, Lyndon Johnson, who went in because of something happening to a sitting president. So the 15 includes those three people who were in, in to begin with for another reason. We all know about women's suffrage, but yeah. when, when did women get to first vote for president? 1920 with the passage of the 19th Amendment, but I have to say that women in the West actually got to vote as early as 1869. In Wyoming, they got to cast their ballots early, um, you know, because the Western states gave it to for local elections and state elections earlier. But the first time for president, for president was, was in 1920. 1920. Yes. All right. Who was the oldest person ever elected president of the United States? Well, Ronald Reagan was 69 when he ran for, elect, for, for elective office for president for the very first time, but he was 73 when he went for re-election. So that would have made him older than John McCain at this point. And, number, and those numbers, are they, they're not really completely honest because of the fact that our life expectancy is so much more, uh, if you go back 100 years especially, the, the kind of health care that we have and all the rest. So 72 back in, I don't know, the early 1900s. Yes, that's absolutely true. It would have been much older in terms of your health expectancy. How many times and for how long has one party controlled all of Washington? Well, in, in modern history is the best way to look at that, and there have been 10 different times. The most recent was 1993 when Clinton went in for the first time where, you know, both houses of Congress and the presidency were controlled by one party. So that was the beginning of that. All right. The book is Election Day by historian and author Kate Kelly. And it's available on your bookstore shelves right about now. In fact, I think I saw it in an airport the other day, right? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. Thank you so much. All right, and don't forget, we're